I want to talk for a minute about this one, the culture piece. And you guys, especially last week, expressed a lot of interest in the culture piece. So we've done a bunch of these activities today to try and demonstrate to you how we build some of the culture in our school. It doesn't just happen. We are very, very intentional about the culture here, and we work really hard at it. For example, freshmen, the first two weeks of school, zero content. All culture building and learning the PBL process. So they get no math, no English, no social studies the first two weeks. We um, do lots of activities, team building things, um, and we teach them the PBL process. So part of how we do that. They're, in particular, our students are coming from all these different schools, so when they come here, they don't know each other. So one of the things we do is they have to make a Glockster about themselves. Yeah, Glockster is basically like an online poster. So they have to make a Glockster about themselves. But we don't just say, hey, make a Glockster about yourselves. We make it a project, a mini project, a one-day mini project, or I think it's only two hours. And we have... Um, an entry event, which is probably the teacher showing an example of one. It's real basic. But we have an entry doc that explains all they have to do. Then they make the Glockster, or we do knows and needs to knows on it. Then they make the Glockster, and then they have to present it to the class at the end. So we're going through, there's our audience. We go through all the PBL steps, and we use the PBL language, and teach them the process while they're doing this introductory thing about themselves. Another session we go through, we use Google Docs like crazy. We can't assume they all know how to do that. So we have um, one where we, and we have a driving question, forgot to say that. Who am I? It's a driving question for the blogger, Glockster. So they have to answer this, and they share out, and they get to know each other. So it's a fun activity, but at the same time, we're teaching the PBL process. Another one we do is on Google Docs. How do I use Google Docs? And we have a whole sheet, and it's all these things they have to do in Google Docs. We don't get up here and lead a class on how to do it. We give them the assignment. We go through it and do the same thing. We have a driving question. We do the knows, needs to knows. And then they go and do it. They're, they turn it in as their final product. And it's just things simply like insert an image, make a hyperlink, change font colors. It's all those kind of things. And they figure it out amongst themselves. And again, PBL process. We have a ropes course on here that we use because it's on our campus. So that's one of the fun things that we do for team building. Excuse me. We go through school and learning outcomes. We go through um, just our, uh, the culture, trust, respect, responsibility. Have them go through like making a social contract if you've ever done those kind of things. So we go through all those things for two weeks and then when they come after that and they're in the real science class for the first time and we throw out and we start an entry event in an entry doc, they're not like blown away by what's going on here. They're like, oh, okay, this is the PBL process. And then we do the knows, needs to knows. Um, they can focus on the content because the process isn't overwhelming to them. Because the first time you do it, the process itself can be a little bit overwhelming and then you can't focus on the content. So we intentionally structure all these activities in and the kind of things that we were just doing, um, team building and skills kind of things, doing the 60 second speeches, all these things. So we have them practicing doing all these things at the beginning of the year to help build that culture that we want and need uh, before we even start the PBL process. Does that make sense? So, um, the other thing is, speaking to the culture piece, I think this is really hard for existing schools sometimes, but um, we believe in practice, trust, respect, responsibility. So, we, schools usually assume the opposite. Like, okay, once you show you're trustworthy, then I'll trust you. So we're, we try to do the opposite. So you have all these privileges until you show yourself untrustworthy. Instead of saying, like, earn the privileges, that's kind of saying, I don't trust you. So we try to do everything in reverse. You can do all these things. You can go out in the comments and work until I see that you aren't successful there. So we kind of try to do everything backwards without a lot of the rules. Um, I, I did make a rule this year, I'll admit. Um, my students were driving me crazy. They kept coming up to me and saying, can I go to the bathroom? And so I, I said, okay, new rule. You're not allowed to ask to go to the bathroom more. You're 16, you're 15 years old. You gotta go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. I don't wanna, I feel like just strange the fact that you're asking me for permission to do what's natural. So 
unless you're abusing it, just go to the bathroom. You don't need to ask. And that you have to untrain some of the behaviors that we've trained them to do, like monkeys in school. So it's it's just the attitude of treating them trustfully until they prove uh, otherwise. So that's a big part of the culture piece. And then the students respond to that because, um, frankly, they're not used to it, number one, in school. So um, that's a big part of building that culture, and it doesn't just happen. And then, of course, we keep redoing these activities throughout the year, and at the end of every project, we reflect. So we have a time where we um, think about things, we reflect, and we ask them to critique us in the project, what they liked and didn't like and things like that, and we critique how the groups go on this project. What, and if we know, everyone usually in the room knows, if there's a problem with this project that broke down, we'll talk about it and we'll process it. What can we do better next time? So it's always the culture, it's a continual battle um, of building it, but just intentionally teaching it is so important. It doesn't just happen. And we've had lots of discussions about your students aren't our students and all that stuff, but I truly believe that kids are kids and that the culture can be built anywhere. I do believe that. And it might take more work and more time in some places than others, but it can be done and it's a really important part of peace. And I just think PBL in general is respectful of students because it gives them that voice and choice and they respond to that too. They appreciate it, and then they they want to do um, better things. And as you know, good teaching relationships. Um, I just saw we were walking back in. It's funny. I just saw a student that's a former student that doesn't go here anymore, and she didn't know who it was. Cause I did, I just screwed the beard, so it was funny to surprise her. She, she didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. But the relationships really matter. Yes. So you're suggesting then that rather than just jumping into a project next week, that there should be some training of the students, potentially for PBL, or can you do that while you're beginning? And you can, there's more than one way to do it. I'm, the, I'm sharing with you what we do, and I think it's really valuable, and maybe for you to think about next year, I don't know, because you're in the middle of the year, where you are, but maybe as an English department next year, you're going to start off the year teaching the process before you teach it, and maybe you're in the middle of the year now, you're already, I know a lot of you are already going with the projects. I think that's fine to do. Um, another piece I want to say about it that you remind me of is um, gradual release of the PBL model. We, you don't, if they're used to um, structure, which most students are, and worksheets and all that stuff, when I started here I was like, okay, we're going wide open. What do you guys want to do? And then they were lost and confused because they're used to the teacher telling them everything to do. And now they're all, I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated, Mr. Kathy. What do you want me to do here? So I had to add structure in, and what I had to learn was to gradually release some. So giving them, uh, you're going to go research this, whatever the topic is, giving them an outline of all the stuff that they needed to find, at least at first. And then later I would show them, hey guys, you see this outline of terms? Let's look at my standard here. They're the same thing. All I'm doing is taking the standard, breaking it down into pieces to go research. And so then put it on them. Take the, slowly release it, and then I found over time, you know, I don't really, there's some kids, there's very special ed kids or whatever, sometimes I still need to give them the outline, but I don't need to give it to everybody. So, gradually release and not just throwing them into the wolves and saying, hey, here's this wide open project, you can do whatever they feel like, it's probably not going to go too well for you if that's how you start out. Having some structure, and age group matters too, you know, middle school versus freshmen versus seniors. So the maturity, where your students are at, what they can handle, and knowing your kids, and gradually releasing how much freedom and such that you give them. Our freshmen, we don't always have all out in the comments off the bat. They, they have to learn how to be here at first. So um, hopefully that helps in some ways. I think the gradual release, and it, it's different if you're a one-off teacher and you're the only one you're building doing PBL versus, you know, a department or a school-wide implementation because then you can, uh, the more the more the students exposed to it, the easier it gets if they're doing it in other classes or other English, that all those things help too. So it kind of depends. But really intentionally teaching it, like anything you want students to learn, really matters. Other questions?